books represent humanity as it, at its best and its worst? To burn books is simply a fundamental repression of ideas. I mean, what can a book do and why is it so dangerous that, that it needs to be physically annihilated? In 1933, the National Socialist German Workers' Party, called the Nazis for short, came to power in Germany and established a dictatorship under the leadership of Adolf Hitler. The Nazis intended to rearm Germany and to reorganize the German state on the principle that the German ethnic group or race was superior to all others in Europe. They suppressed all dissent within Germany, making it a crime to criticize the regime. The newly established Ministry of Propaganda and Enlightenment set up various chambers to control specific aspects of German culture, such as art, literature, theater, film, music, virtually all forms of entertainment and all forms of dissemination of news. In 1933, in April, Nazi German students decided to organize a nationwide book burning program to eliminate foreign influence, to purify German culture as they saw it. So you have committees of students meeting with professors together, deciding what categories of books in these university libraries would count as un-German. They didn't see themselves as suppressing culture, they saw themselves as advancing Aryan German culture. I remember very distinctly a conversation between my parents and some friends who were all shocked that a nation like the Germans, an educated, highly intelligent nation, would burn books. Books never hurt anybody. The event that the students planned occurred on May 10th, 1933. In each German university city, 34 of them in all, thousands of people gathered together at a public place in which books that had been confiscated either by the students themselves or by Nazi party officials, often with the help of police, were brought and dumped in a pile. Student leaders exhorted their followers and the uh, listening crowds to swear an oath by the fire to destroy and combat subversive and un-German literature. For the national treason against our soldiers in World War I, we're burning uh, Hemingway's uh, books. Joseph Goebbels, the propaganda minister himself, spoke at the book burning in Berlin. It is amazing to me the variety of books that that was burnt uh, on that night and, and, and thereafter. Among the authors whose books were burned were Ernest Hemingway, both Mann brothers, Thomas and Heinrich. There's the German writer, um, Erich Maria Remarque, who wrote the famous book All Quiet on the Western Front. Helen Keller. Jack London, the American nature writer. There's very little that unites all of these books, really, except that they were all considered dangerous by the Nazis. A grand total of the number of volumes, perhaps best estimates, would be between 80 or 90,000 volumes. For weeks afterwards, books were confiscated from libraries, from bookshops, and from private collections. In 1939, the Nazi regime initiated what became the Second World War. During the course of this war, the Nazis began to implement their population policy, a priority element of which was the annihilation of six million Jews on the European continent. 
in a mass murder, a genocide that we now call the Holocaust. I was about 11 when I read the diary of Anne Frank, and uh, it was translated into Persian. Reading about Anne Frank and millions of other Iranians reading Anne Frank, they discover that they are that little girl and that what happened to that little girl was a supreme act of injustice. And so they connect to her uh, in a way that no political sermon or propaganda could effect. The first thing every totalitarian regime does, along with confiscation and mutilation of reality, is confiscation of history and confiscation of culture. I think they all happen almost simultaneously. Um, they surely happened in my experience uh, when I was living in Iran. For me, it's both um, heartbreaking and quote unquote a sort of badge of honor uh, that my book is not allowed to be published in Iran. It has been translated into 35 languages and um, not in Persian. Really all literature is dangerous to a regime that fears the free flow of ideas because the literature in its most fundamental way is meant to forge connections among human beings. Because you don't know where it takes you. Uh, knowledge is always unpredictable. There is always a risk. It is like Alice jumping down that hole, running after that white rabbit, not knowing where she goes. And for tyrants, control is the main thing. They don't like this unpredictability. They don't want the citizens um, to connect to the unknown parts of themselves, of their past, and to connect to the world. So for a totalitarian regime, this is perhaps the most dangerous thing because these regimes are predicated on the idea that the people within them will resign themselves to thinking that this is all there is and that there aren't any other options. I think the shame is ours, is everyone's. We, we, we all have to think that as human, we share the best and the worst. And that as human beings, what happened then can happen again. How serious those warning signs were taken is exemplified by my mother, who, when I asked her if we had to worry about a guy like Hitler, she said, no, we are living in a democracy. We have the uh, protection of the police. Nobody is going to hurt us. So talk about warning signs. There were plenty of them. Did we take them serious? My family didn't, never believed that Germans would stoop so low that they would implement the threats which one fanatic uttered. And so we didn't. our own life went from bad to worse and culminated in July of 1942 when we were arrested and sent to a concentration camp to, to make this clear, it was a life without hope. The only thing that they cannot put in jail or um, prevent from physically leaving is your mind, is your imagination. That cannot be captured. But the idea of freedom should be kept alive, even if it's between two people or three people, talk about it, think about it, live about it, and hope about it.